Right? This is the first prayer and worship night that we've had. And we appreciate all those of you who came forward. I know sometimes it feels like wherever you're seated, to walk to the front here, it feels like the biggest chasm for you to, to cross over. But that's actually not the biggest chasm. The biggest chasm is between here and going out there. Because revival is not for the church. Revival is for the world. Revival is what happens out there. And I'm so happy that Pastor Edric brought this up because the one thing that God stirred in my heart as we close off this thing is His word in James chapter 2. In James 2, 14 to 17, it's written, What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but don't show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing and you say goodbye, have a good day, stay warm and eat well, but then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? So you see, faith by itself isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. You know what this passage talks about? What it says right there. We live in a time right now where it's, not, it's nothing new, but we've seen, you see it more prevalent right now. This is the era of we're seeing a lot of virtue signaling. All of us, we can, we can respond all we want. And sometimes we say, there's the right thing to do and I want to signal my, what I believe in, my conviction. All that doesn't matter unless you go out there and you do what it takes. You do what God has called you to do. That is what matters. A missionary once said this, you will not make a missionary of a person who will not serve in their home church, who will not serve in their home, who will not serve here in their own nation. We all see all these grand things. Yes, one day God will lead us there. But it starts right now. It starts in your school. It starts this holiday. It starts with your friend that texted you this week. It starts with your neighbour that's somewhere there. It starts right now. And so I think that's the perfect way that we end. It's not about what happens here. It's about what we bring out there to your schools and then in the new year when we come. I think that is something very important. This evening is just the beginning of something. And I know maybe as we come to this place, you're wondering why, why there's so many worship nights, so many prayer nights. I think you all know earlier this year in, in July, we had a, over here as well, there was a, a youth day prayer that we hosted here. Then just a while ago, we had the FOPX uh, worship night that was over in uh, St. Andrew's Cathedral. We have this. And then there's going to be other, there are many other prayer movements. I want to say this, uh, all these things is because we want to keep a momentum of prayer and worship. The Word of God says to pray unceasingly. It doesn't mean that we pray every single moment, but as much as possible, we keep praying. And we see something powerful happening. I know there are many prayer movements, many prayer uh, activities going on in schools and everything. The more, the better. We need all the prayer we can get. So even this youth, uh, uh, prayer and worship night for Love Singapore's youth, it, doesn't, it starts tonight and it doesn't end tonight. There's going to be a lot more. In fact, coming up, I just want to let you all quickly know, uh, at the end of the year, okay, in, uh, on, in December, first, they'll be having their regular first youth nights. They're going to be having a special worship night as well. Is it what, again? No, it's not again. It's we're keeping that fire burning. And this youth and prayer worship night, we're already planning for the next one for Love Singapore. We're going to do it sometime after Chinese New Year next year. I'm planning for at least uh, maybe three more next year. We're going to have even more down the line because we want to keep this momentum. We pray and we go out, we sow, we plow, we come back, we pray some more, we go out, we sow some more, we plow some more and we do the work of the kingdom. That is what it's going to take. And we have to rise up to do this. And I'm excited because I know God is doing something new. So I'm going to pray for us. And after that, if you got to go, you got to go. We're going to sing one last song. You're going to hang around and, and continue to worship the Lord. That's fine. But I know it's late. Some of you got to get home already. But I think tonight's been such a powerful night. God is doing something. And don't ever... I, just one last thing. I know always many last things, okay? The Word of God specifically says, Who dares despise the day of small beginnings? God's Word says that. And I like that, you know, who dares despise? It's almost like God is upset. Some of you, maybe you despise yourself because you think you're not talented enough. You're, how dare you? Don't dare despise the small dream that God has placed upon your heart right now. Seated right here, some of you, you're going to be missionaries, you're going to be pastors. Someone here, you might be the next senior pastor of your church. Who knows? Because God can do great things. God can do something far greater. You guys, you got to rise up. You got to believe it. And you know what's the best thing? You guys are not rising up alone. You, just like many of us who are older pastors right now or we're senior pastors or whatever, we didn't rise up by ourselves. We were supported by many uncles, many big brothers and big sisters. Joe was a big brother to me as well. He supported me. He taught me many things. He talked to me about many things. And I've got many other big brothers. Pastor Jeff, Pastor Edric, they are brothers to me as well. You are not alone. We are going to do what it takes 
because we're going to be one church. We're going to be one bride of Christ. We're going to move together as one people for the kingdom of God. So Lord, we commit ourselves afresh into your hands. Lord, we know, we see the shakings. We see so many things happening in the world. Lord, many people, they feel hopeless in a time like that. But Lord, we are filled with hope because we know that you are preparing the world for something. Lord, we cry out that there will be a great awakening. There will be a great revival. There will be a great harvest across the entire world. Lord, because we are willing to rise up and to go out as the workers in the field. So Lord, use each and every one of us. And for all of you here, especially those who have responded, I pray that this will mark the beginning of a wonderful journey that many years later you're going to look back at this very moment and remember because you responded out of obedience because you said God here I am use me send me deploy me you are going to look back and remember that God is a faithful God that God is a good God so Lord we cry out we cry out for the nations around us Lord we cry out for all the people in Singapore who do not know you Lord we cry out for our friends and family who have turned away from you those who have never heard the gospel Lord use us and send us out may you every single one of you be that mouthpiece of God that you will bring hope you will speak life to every single person you come across because you have said Lord count me as one of your mighty men and women Lord count me as one of your apostles Lord count me as one of your disciples use me wherever you go so Lord I bless every single person here in the mighty name of Jesus we pray Amen and Amen come on let's give him all the glory Hallelujah.